tip of the continent. Uh, the environment has been filtered with uh, turmoil and chaos. We have seen deaths, we have seen looting after the arrest of uh, the ex-president uh, uh, Jacob Magekekekisa uh, Zuma. As the Bible would have it, is there a word from the Lord at a time such as this? When the hearts of men are stopping for fear, what is it that the religious environment, the religious organizations must be constantly doing? And many of you who have been watching me for the greatest and the longest time are still arguing, but why is it that you constantly go back to refer to the Bible? Because some of your thinking and some of your teachings seem to be going the opposite direction. Well, I want to share a secret with you today, and the secret is on interpretation. Every time you read uh, wisdom literature, or you read the Bible, or you read ancient texts, you need to read them with an open mind. And let me give you a framework. The text must work firstly for you as an individual. The text must work for you as a family. The text must work for you as a community. The text must work for you as a country and ultimately the entire human race should be able to respond to this biblical text or this wisdom literature text. Some of these allegories and some of these stories have within them what I might want to call lifelong lessons. Just like our forefathers used to give us those bedtime stories. The baboon and the rabbit, they went to cook each other and the other one was cooked and etc. Within those short stories, we're learning how to deal with those that are cunning and how do we preserve ourselves. When you walk up into the biblical text, therefore, many people have forfeited the benefit of enjoying the scriptures enjoying sacred literature because they only are looking at the dogmatic, the theological, the soteriological, the historical settings of the passage. And you forget the constant evolution of the passage as it meets different people at different dispensations. I want to share with you a scripture this morning that will, as, when I was told I was going to come and make a presentation here, this scripture occupied my spirit. And that scripture is found in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 7. 2 Kings, chapter 7, verses 3 to verse 20. I have looked at this story in the past, but with the crisis that we have at hand right now, I felt moved to share again another perspective to that same text. The story tells us about the four lepers. The four lepers. It almost sounds like a modern text. Because these four lepers, because they had leprosy, they were put on quarantine. Yeah, that's a very, very nice. Uh, some of you, all of you now understand what it means to suffer from leprosy if you have been on quarantine. You know, when you have COVID, then you are put on quarantine. Don't try to go to Zimbabwe, by the way, without vaccination. As they are the bus from here with 26, 36 people, the whole bus was put on quarantine. And when, when they were put on quarantine, the, the, the scriptures don't spare us that the, this quarantine meant that their disease was contagious. And when I'm saying that, I want you to think at a family level. I want you to think at a religious level. I want you to think at a political level. I want you to think about Jacob Zuma. I want you to think about political exiles. I want you to think about churches disfellowshipping people. I want you to think about families dis, dis, distancing themselves. I can't remember the word off my head. When disowning their own children. Because their children have done what they deem to be unacceptable. So the concept of quarantine, when I mention quarantine, you need to understand I'm speaking at all those various levels. It's not only physical quarantine, it could be spiritual quarantine, it could be medical quarantine, it could be political quarantine, which we call exile, of course. So these four lepers who had a disease that was contagious, 
This is when a mindset of one man is deemed to be more dangerous for the others than organizations that are stereotyped will always put those members on quarantine. I speak from experience and I have a track record in this regard of being put on quarantine in religious organizations. When your thinking is not in line with others, yes, it's obvious to preserve others. These ones who are thinking, behaving, infected like this must be put on quarantine. So I forgive you for putting uh, them on quarantine. You are preserving the others. But when they were on quarantine, the passage then becomes very exciting. They sat with themselves. Now, the passage moves away from those that have quarantined them to them who have the problem. They sat with themselves. And, 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 and they said one to another. Take note. I might get excited. Please hold me right there. They said one to another, if we stay in quarantine, because then there's a political conversation that begins to happen in the background. While they were on quarantine, the city of Samaria was besieged by war. I like that part there. Even if you can put other people on quarantine, it does not mean that you remain with no problems. When you think that you have eliminated the problems, you still remain with new challenges that are facing you as organizations, as religious organizations, as political organizations, removing, exercising, disfellowshipping, imprisoning each other does not solve the problems that you have. Locking up anybody in prison does not solve the problem. Poverty is not solved by arresting anybody. You think that you are solving one problem and you are... There's a book I'm writing, by the way, and I'm, let me get them some strength to finish it up. The problem of problem solving. The problem of problem solving. Every time you are solving a problem, you are creating a new problem. And when you are solving that problem, you are creating a new problem. Being single is a problem. Marriage is a solution. When you are getting married, you are now getting new problems. Married problems. Being barren is a problem. But having children is a problem that is solving other problems because children bring their own problems. As you are solving those problems, you are getting new problems. When you are poor, you had no friends. Now you are working, you have new problems. Bills and debts and cars that must be paid for. Deadlines that you must meet at work. So each time you are solving a problem, remember that you are solving a problem by creating a new problem. So yes, they eliminated the four lepers out of the city, but the fact that they eliminated the lepers, eliminated them, did not mean that they would have no problems of their own. They were besieged. They could not also get food. So when lepers could not get food, the people in the city could not also get food. Now here is where I want to throw a small little curveball for those of you who can think faster with me. The leper logic thinking that says if we sit here, we die. If we go there to the city to look for food, we die. Now, now take note. Remaining in a place of quarantine, it is eminent death. Standing up to going looking for solutions, you are still confronted with death. I want to speak to the church in a very loud way without mixing my words. Remaining on our corners of denominationalism, we still die. If we should face up the political environment, we still die. Now let me leave this with you as a moment of thought. A person who has not yet confronted death on both sides are not yet ready to live. Only those who have embraced death can start living. Sit in your cave. It's eminent death. Stand up. You still are going to be confronted with death. You see, this is where I get sometimes excited almost to a point of anger. Don't deal with people who are afraid of death. Social death religious death, you know, social, you know, people are going, what are people going to say? They are going to, and you're afraid, and you live a myopic, less quality life because you're afraid of dying. I mean, you look after your wife, you're still not good enough. You, you look after your children, you're still not good enough. You, 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 you can never get it right in this world. 
put that between your heads. There is death in front of you when you are seeking for solutions. There is death where you are when you decide we will not participate in the political conversation. As a church, our religion and our doctrines don't allow us. Oh, well, sit where you are with your canker doctrine. Your funeral is coming in your inactivity. But I love the conclusion that the lepers came up with. We would rather die in search of solutions than die sitting on our theories of despondency and non-cognitive participation. Doing nothing is a funeral. Doing something is a funeral. I want you to understand that. And by the way, remember, those who have tried nothing have failed nothing. If you spend the rest of your life trying nothing, you are 100%. You fail nothing. It's only those who have started, who have stood up to try something. They have failed. They have failed. They have failed. Yes, they fail because they are trying. Have you not read the passage in the Bible that says a righteous man, though he falls seven times, yet he will walk again. Take note. Let me ask you a question. Why does a righteous man fall seven times? I want to give you a moment to think about that. Why does a righteous man fall seven times? He falls seven times because every time he falls, he stands up again. He falls and he stands up again. The Bible would not have said if you fall seven times. Because you cannot fall when you have fallen. But you hear in that passage that with every fall, there is every stand. With every fall, there is every stand. And seven times later, you still find this man standing. They would rather die. We would rather die as families, as a church, as a country, and as a continent. We would rather die looking for solutions than dying sitting around doing nothing. Then, when you make a resolution for solutions, see, this is another part that excites me. It is the divine interruptions of human decisions, which we might want to term spiritual conversations when resolutions at a physical level are made. You see, when you make your decision at your spiritual level, please take note of this. When you make a decision at a spiritual level and your life is prepared to be offered as a sacrifice, you, you, you switch on the participation of the spiritual realm to meet up with your spirit. I, I get excited on that because that's where Romans says that the spirit of God confirms and connects with our spirit. To confirm within our hearts that we are sons and daughters of God. Therefore, God does not remain as an abstract being in the space of none rich. But when we make our decisions within our spirits, then the black book says, and God also, the supernatural. You may call it karma, you may call it the spiritual world, you may call it God. I don't care what you'll call it, but when a decision is made and life is placed as a sacrifice, heaven cannot shut up. If you have forgotten, remember Abraham, when he had resolved he will kill his son and he lifted his, spear, his knife to kill his son. Heaven did not shut up. Abraham, stop right there. Why? Because when a human being is committed to their path, the spiritual world empowers their decisions and moves with them. But this passage is even more exciting. When they made their resolution in the night, that's the sermon of another day. You know, the conversations of the night. You know, what is it that you speak in the night? I remember the men from Emmaus who were also walking in the night. And while they were walking and talking, talking about this man who had been resurrected, the men who had been resurrected came to join them. Now, hear my theory and what I call Pong's theology. Your conversations attract spiritual company. Your conversations, they attract spiritual company. That which you are talking about comes closer to you. So in the night, they resolved. 
kusiri kufa ndo kupi it is death either way you see when a dead man stands so that's why i always tell people you can't kill a dead man because he's dead already he's dead already so go and find someone that is living and the living are the cowards when they agreed to die then the bible says the heavens were moved i like that part there the angels were moved i like that part there the spiritual realm responded with rumblings with thunder with wind which blew throughout the entire camp of the enemy they thought that the egyptians were coming they thought that the some the, the, the people in samaria had actually called another army to come and kill them they heard the voices that were happening in the spiritual realm and i want to say this there was a speed sound break where the conversations of the spiritual world manifested in the physical world they heard the sound they did not see them but they heard them the war was created in their own minds in the atmosphere there was chaos in the camp they ran the black book says leaving their clothes hanging on the thorn trees naked they ran for kilometers on the end never to be seen again when you make your decisions strongly enough heaven can move ahead of you and perform for you that which you cannot perform for yourself Sometimes fear is created because you cannot see the future. Come on here the preacher today. Fear not the future. Your conversations have been heard. Oh come on someone out there. Come on someone. What you have agreed to do. Now you can begin to read that passage. I wish other pastors were here and I could be telling them what where two or three have agreed on earth. Come on come. Now that makes sense now. When you agree and you bind something on earth heaven must also bind it i think that makes sense right here the four men sat down agreed and they bound their covenant together we die we die together heaven agreed with them and interjected in their projection they walked come on somebody they walked on a one victory Ish. they walked on a battle conquered they walked tomorrow where god was yesterday you know when you are walking in the footsteps of the spiritual being that has walked ahead of you there's nothing new you are just following in the footsteps of success they found the camps were empty follow the logic the first camp they went in and they ate the second camp they went in and they ate the third tent they started collecting the gold and then the fourth thing they were starting to collect the gold maslow's hierarchy of needs start dealing with fundamental issues the issues of the stomach start with the stomach <laughs> stomach is sorted if you want to be a politician you want to be a religious leader you want to become anything in this life never undermine the politics of the stomach if people are hungry you cannot rule a hungry stomach and i know many of us right now who are educated sitting on your leather couches in your homes with your heaters around yourself busy tweeting and sending comments about looting 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 wait until you are looted also wait until you also run out of your own resources i left my lungs out in the course of the week another place in uh, winter winterfeld there they ran out of water the whole city for almost a week and people are afraid to go to the toilet in the bush because they are waiting for water to come in the house you know amazing what civilization has done to us hey come on just go and buy yourself a hole go and buy yourself a small little tool go to the bush dig a hole and do what is almost best to do fertilize the ground there's nothing wrong with that even cows and chickens do that every day there's nothing sacred about a human being going to the toilet in the bush when the resources are reduced you go back to default deal with the stomach issues first and after the stomach issues then you hear they started moving over to other cosmetic issues inclusive to collecting of gold and etc does that sound like politics to you does that sound like a religious leader to you politicians who in their first entrance into office 
they come in and the first things people, human beings do, they firstly start dealing with their stomachs. And when their stomachs are full, then they start dealing with issues of gold, issues of properties, issues of power, and etc. and etc. But on this passage, what you don't want to miss, which I want all of us as Africa to begin thinking about, Africa has been put on quarantine for the longest of time. We have been locked up in the caves of the uneducated, the caves of the indigent, the caves of the unbankable, the caves of the unemployed. And we want to tell you as Africans, wherever you are, you are a dark continent, that's what they say. If we remain where we are as a continent, we are still going to die. If we stand up to challenge the West, we are still going to die. Come on, guys. Which way is life? Maponga, shut up. I'm still going to die. Maponga, talk. I'm still going to die. Either way, I'm a dead man. Why must I be afraid of death when I'm already dead? It's just a matter of a timetable as to when am I dying. But it is sure, with no food, you are going to die. From these caves where the African family, the African church has been locked in. I want to challenge all of us. Let's get up on our feet. We would rather die looking for solutions than die massaging our poverty and our lack of food as a means of grace and entrance into heaven. Yes, when you get into power as a politician, eat also in the first tent. Come on, guys. You can eat in the second year. Come on, guys. You can eat in the third year. But talk to me, guys. On the fifth year, you are still eating. On the sixth, seventh year, you are still eating. On the twentieth year, you are still eating. Twenty-seven years later, you are still eating. For Zimbabwe, forty years later, you are still not satisfied eating. The lepers reached a point of resolution. And I think on another day, I must come and speak about that resolution. When they finally looked at each other, the lepers, and they said one to another, we are not doing right. Come on, guys. We are not doing right. We need the religious leaders to say those words. We are not doing right. We need the politicians to say those words. Come on. Dr. Ramaphosa, with your top six, look at each other and say, we are not doing right. Dr. Mnangagwa and your fellow brothers sit around one day and look at each other when you look at sewage pipes that are bursting and children are playing in there in, in, in sewage water and people are drinking sewage water, come on guys, we need to look at each other, Chamisa and your fellow friends, and look at each other and say, we are not doing right. The pharmaceutical companies out there, I want to challenge you, look yourself in the face and agree with me, we are not doing right. The banking infrastructure, Look at yourself. You've become multi-billionaires. But people that you say are banking the money for, they are sinking into deeper and deeper poverty. We need these words to be spoken and spoken loudly so that the entire continent and beyond, we can hear these words. We are not doing right. Come on, read the scriptures with me. Today is the day of good news. Yet we are keeping it to ourselves. In the midst of such abundance of minerals, of resources, materials, human resource, education, food. How can we be so hungry? With so much water, how can we have no electricity? With so much coal, how can we not have electricity? We need to speak those words. We are not doing right. It's a day of good news. We have the resources. We can't keep it to ourselves. Come on, let us go and report this to the city so that everybody else can come also and enjoy the benefits with us. I think that's the conclusion of the sermon right there. When you have eaten and you are full, please remember others are still starving. 
Others are still hungry. Invite others also. How did you make money? Ish, ish. It was a difficult process. You are lying. If you got that money legitimately, it must be easy. One, two, three, four, five. Help others also to become what you are like. We are not doing right when we succeed by ourselves. We are not doing right when we eat by ourselves. We are not doing right when we quarantine others, yet we are also due for quarantine ourselves. must be a resolution within every heart recognition of error and evil announcements tell others how they can also access help and they shouted because they could not get closer to the city sometimes good news don't need to be spoken nicely just say the word share the word those who hear the word will be liberated but remember this one thing. Every time you talk, God is in conversation. You are confronted with death on either side. When you make a resolution, heaven will run ahead of you. You will walk on the yesterday of God's success. When God moves ahead, you have no sword that you must speak up. There is enough food for you to eat. But when you are full, remember others are hungry also. Carry the news to those that need it. Let's rehabilitate each other in the midst of this turmoil. I want to challenge and remind all of you, either way, we are dying. We remain where we are, we die. We go over there, we die. Rather we die looking for solutions than die in the presence of our own fears. May the Lord, God of heaven, bless you. May he cause his countenance to shine upon you. May the great light of the omnipotent God shine upon the continent of Africa. May peace prevail in the land of South Africa and beyond. May our leaders come to a realization of the plunder. May heaven's grace invade our own fears and walk ahead of us. Let this peace be found in our land. Let food not be shot on our tables. Let sicknesses and diseases be kept far from our borders. Let the rains fall upon the continent and let the people harvest their fruits. And let the nation grow from strength to strength. Oh Lord! Remember us even at this moment of great despair. Let us hear the sounds in the air of the great rescue squad from the presence of the omnipotent. May the grace of our Lord be with us all. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Let us have this kingdom. Let us also develop power until eternity future. Amen. Amen.